Welcome back to Chicago, guys and gals. Lisa Martin here in Chicago with Ansible Fest 2022 with John Furrier. John, we've had great conversations. This is day two of our coverage. We were here yesterday, yeah. we're here today. We've gotten to talk with great folks in the Ansible community, the partner ecosystem, customers. We've broken some news that they've talked about. Now we're going to talk about industrial automation, IT, OT convergence. What excites you about this yeah, This is This is going to be a great segment. This is one of the feature keynote presenters, customer Rockwell, huge in, in I, OT, IT, Edge, robotics, plan, equipment, everything that we probably have, they do. Um, this guest has really great story about what's cutting edge and what's relevant uh, in, the, in the edge and I, IT slash automation area, super relevant. I'm looking forward to the segment. Yes, please welcome David Rapini, the Global Plant PX Business Manager at Rockwell Automation. Thanks. David, great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you, nice Give to be the here. audience a bit of an overview of Rockwell Automation and then let's dig into what you guys are doing there. Sure, um, Rockwell Automation uh, probably is the largest global automation provider of equipment uh, focused exclusively on automation. About 22,000 employees, about seven billion kind of revenue numbers. We make basically controllers for the automation industry, soft, industrialized software, power drives, you know, some of the robotics content, uh, smart cart kind of uh, applications. And what are your key industries that you're covering? Wow, so that's a broad market. So we do a lot of different industries. So we cover uh, obviously oil and gas, uh, life science, water, wastewater. We do automotive. Um, so just about any industry actually, any place that needs industrial automation covering uh, any type of manufacturing process or any type of process uh, application, yeah. we're pretty much there. You know, it's interesting, IOT has been a word, Internet of Things, light bulb, wearables. Industrial IOT, where you're in, is a really key space. It's physical plants, sometimes it's sensitive, um, critical infrastructure for governments, businesses. Exactly. I mean, there's running stuff. Definitely. <laughs> this it, is huge. Yeah, and it's a big area for us, like getting that data, you know, everybody talks about analytics and what the world's going to be happening to in, in that IT, OT space. And Rockwell's really well positioned at that lower level where we're, we actually own the data, create the data for all that analytics that you're talking about. What was your main message today on stage? I want to replay that here and then get into it because I think this is really, we're starting to see real traction in adoption in automation, cloud scale, edge is happening, it's exploding. What was your key message on stage today? Yeah, I think it's that the world's really changing in that space. Um, you know, five years ago, uh, you would have had a completely different message around you know, that connectivity and having that content actually delivered to that space and having, like even the connectivity to that OT space is just makes people uncomfortable in that world because there's obviously moving pieces, uh, you know, damaged equipment, you know, God forbid any types of explosions or things like that on, 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 uh, on uh, bad environmental type conditions. So um, we're working in that space to really make those connections much more open and, and now that those connections are starting to happen and we're getting more and more comfort with that in that layer, um, there's a lot more we can do in that space which and, is kind of why we're here. And talk about why Ansible and what, it, what it's going to be able to unlock for Rockwell to be able to achieve. Sure, there's a lot of areas that we want to play with but our, in Ansible, but our first targets are really our, primarily our servers. So there's a lot of edge-based servers out there. Um, you know, we, we call them a PaaS server, which is the process automation system server, and, and there's an engineering workstation, operator workstation. Those main core servers, some of them are redundant. Um, you know, the OT guys, to them, it's a burden to manage that content. They're, they're good at making, you know, oil and gas. They know how to do water, wastewater. They know how to build cars. But managing servers, mm, you know, not in their... Not, not in their, their wheelhouse. wheelhouse. Right. <laughs> exactly right. So, so having that capability and that connection to get down there gives us some, some power with Ansible to go ahead and start um, building them initially. So making that initial builds out of the gate. Um, that makes them really consistent and built together as a, so that the, every application looks and feels the same and, and they know what they're going to get when their servers power up. Um, so that's a big one, but, uh, but just maintaining them, keeping them patched, you know, keeping security vulnerabilities down. Um, you know, I was in a facility not long ago that was still running Windows 2000, right? Um, so you know, they have an application there that's just working, it works, they don't want to touch it, and, and it's been running for 20 years, so why touch it, right? So this was going to kind of hopefully break that, uh, that, that, that yeah, challenge. Yeah, make sure that you keep, keep that password handy. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> We've had to see interview people, people leave. Talk about the security aspect, because OT has been locked down, mindset, hardened, end-to-end, -end, supply chains vetted, everything's kind of tight on the old OT model, yeah. relative security. When you get to IT, you mentioned vulnerabilities, 
but the innovation's there too, so how does that um, reconcile for you? What's your reaction to that? Yeah, that, we that, see a big move there, right? So it used to be they were always head head to head, butting heads, IT, OT, you know, IT focuses on, you know, keeping the system secure, keeping the data down, locked down and, 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 and reliable. Um, OT focuses more on production, right? Making sure they hit their numbers in their production. So oftentimes, you know, having IT push out a patch in the middle of production line in the middle of a day and rebooting a server shuts down production and you know, yeah. that, those kind People of conflicts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so those conflicts yeah. were, were, were pretty common. Um, there's still a lot of that there, but it's getting better, yeah. right? And I see more and more of that working together as a team to, to solve a lot of those challenges. And honestly, I keep going back to the analytics angle and the, and the diagnostics and, and, and that world of deep data, you know, big data kind of mining you know, without the IT space to cover that, the cloud data storage, the horsepower. If you had to kind of like rank the complexity, because we were just talking before you came on about, things got to get complex before they can get simpler, because that inflection points bring that new capability. What's some of the complexities that you're seeing that are going to be either abstracted away or solved with some of these new technologies like Ansible and others that are coming fast? Because at the end of the day, it's got to still be easier. It's not going to be yeah. harder. That can't be harder. Yeah, so I'll give you a, a real world example that's a little embarrassing. Um, so <laughs> today we deliver our PaaS servers um, as a solution and we, we provide that as a VM image that people start with as, a, as the first building block. But once you start to deploy that um, and actually connect it with the rest of the infrastructure, hook it up to our factory talk directory, hook it up to the DNS service, once you start doing all that work, it's about 700 mouse clicks that somebody has to know what they're doing uh, to actually spin it up the rest of the way and get it connected. Um, with Ansible, uh, we're cutting that number like in half is the hope. So, and, and we're going to continue to expand that and make it even less uh, work for the users. To Talk about skill training. gap issue. You, the training alone on that yeah. is to have the right people. That's the second big piece, right? So, so those OT people typically don't have that skill set. So you have to have a fairly high skilled level person to do that work. We're hoping to take that, uh, that work off of them and put that on, yeah. on answer. So that sounds pretty works. consistent. Do you think, is that the kind of the consistency of the problem space is, that the OT just has a different goal and they just need something to be invisible and easy like electricity? Yeah, I think so, especially in this world, right? In that OT space, right? In, in that IT space, sorry. Yeah, so, so managing servers and things like that, it just is not what they want to deal with and it's not what they went to school for and it's not what they're doing <laughs> in their job when they get hired, right? Yeah. It sounds to me like Rockwell Automation is a facilitator of the IT and OT folks coming together and actually working better together, maybe understanding each other's requirements, goals, objectives? Most definitely. Uh, so we have, you know, we're offering a lot of cloud content now. Um, we're continuing to expand that content. We're working with a lot of different IT departments and OT departments to try to marriage those two groups together to try to bring that stuff together. Um, we have, a, we have a partnership with Cisco uh, where we actually you know, industrialize uh, you know, some of their switch components and sell that as, as part of our content. And, and that relationship gives us a big inroad with a lot of the IT departments. That's important to have that, be able to speak the language of both sides. Yeah, definitely, right? Knowing and understanding the terminology and, and just being able to, to know the challenges that IT guys face as well yes. as the OTs is really a big component of what we do. You know, one of the questions I wanted to ask and, and uh, because the keynote was very, very cool, but you made a comment that your claim to fame was that you wrote the code for the Spider-Man <laughs> ride yeah. at Universal. Yeah. Tell the story, how does that work? I'm just, I wrote them many times, I've been there. Yeah, so. so take, take us through that little journey. Yeah, so I, every, every time people ask me what we do for a living in automation, you know, I, I can talk about you know, making cars and things like that, but it doesn't ring true. So, so I did do a lot of work on the Spider-Man ride, which is at Universal Studios. Um, you know, it was, uh, a real challenge making sure you know how that connections actually work and make I did most of the motion control content for that to make the movements of the cars you know seamless with the backgrounds uh, definitely a lot of fun so those kind of projects are rare but they're really fun when you get those I hope they're, you have a, fr a free pass for any time you want to go yeah, on I it. don't unfortunately oh, so you should. I, I try to get in the back <laughs> rooms all the time at that facility but it's uh, rare to I get mean in that's there. like I mean it's a high end roller coaster machine it's like I mean that is that is as robotics State of the art. industrial yeah. Because this, yeah, I mean, it's an intense ride. All these yeah, rides, are it is, and you know, you never move more than like eight feet on that whole ride, um, and it feels like you've dropped, you know, two thousand feet out of the sky on yeah. some of that content. So it's really amazing. I will say it's a little dated. I've been riding on the. I, I, a part of my team worked on the. Uh, um, uh, the Harry Potter rides, which oh, are much good. next I couldn't generation. get on that, the line was too long. I've been on that one. <laughs> it's a long way, but it's worth it. it is. David, I'd ask you a question on the, on the future. For people watching who are um, new, observing industrial IoT, what's the most important story going on in your world today? Is it the transformation? Is it the standards? Is it the security? What's, 
what are the top two or three things that are going on that are really transformative right now in, in automating at the edge? I really want to say that it's standardization. It, it's, it's about using open standards and, and standard protocols to deliver content in a, in a, in a reusable fashion. So, you know, Having custom proprietary content like a lot of automation suppliers or, or even like a lot of other industries, it's, it's hard to maintain, it doesn't work well with other products. It's great because you can do a lot of flexibility what you want to do, but at the end of the day, it's about keeping the thing running and hooking it up to other components. So that open standards based solution you'll see us spending more energy on, you know, part of the Ansible open community thing is nice in that space as well, and you'll see us doing more stuff in that place, that, that play. Talk about your influence there in the community. You know, we, we've been talking the last couple of days about Ansible is nothing if not the power of the community, the collaboration within. Talk about being able to influence that and what that means to you personally as well as to Rockwell. Yeah, so open communities are big for us. We have, uh, you know, obviously a customer advisory boards and things like that that we deal with, but we also have an open community forum where people can share di dialogues and share ideas. We have large events, we have a process solution users group event uh, where we bring in you know, hundreds, if not thousands of engineering people to, to talk through the, all of these problems that they're facing and it's not a Rockwell event, it's a you know, community event, right? Where we actually are talking about uh, you know, what industry problems people are seeing. And a lot of the ITOT convergence thing is really top of mind, a lot of people's minds, especially the cybersecurity content. What are some of the things that you heard the last couple of days announcement wise, obviously big news coming out today that excites you about the direction that, that, that Ansible's going and how it's responding to the community. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of their feedback that they get, and sitting in a lot of these sessions, they get a lot of interesting feedback from their customer base and reacting to that I think is very high on their priority list. And what I've been seeing here, you know, some of the AI stuff that they were showing on automatically like uh, defining some of the scripts for their, for their code, and the intelligence behind a lot of that content was amazing. Um, I see a lot of that moving forward and we're, we're heading the same direction at Rockwell as well with yeah. more AI in mean, our content. The data is a big story too, coming out of all the devices, analytics, um, great stuff. Yeah, pulling that data up into the cloud space and trying to do something valuable with all that data. It's, you know, um, we've had big data for a long time. It's just figuring out the analytics and how to actually act on that data and get it back into the control to do something so with it. It's tough. All kidding aside, my serious question on this is that, you know, is it the year finally OT and IT converge? It's, it seemed like it's been trying for about a decade. Yeah, that's a tough, <laughs> that's a tough one to answer. So I, I, would, I would say it's not there yet. I think there's still a lot of conflict in that space. Um, you know, the, the OT guys still have a, a long history of that space, but as you see more retirement and more people phasing out of that and younger crowds coming in, yeah. you know, the automation space is ripe for that kind of transition because yeah. um, coming out of college, you know, jumping into automation isn't always the top of the notch. A lot of people want to go work at the big big uh, Amazons or wherever. Or a lot of, lot of stuff going on in space is pretty cool, a lot mm -hmm. of physical. Yeah. I've seen a lot more machine learning and physical devices in the industry been reporting on. It's interesting, I think, I think it's I think it's close to a tipping point because we saw it machine learning yeah. and the trivial apps like chatbots never really took off. Yep. I mean, just expert systems basically, but they're not really going to the next level. So now they are, you're starting to see more, you know, of wisdom projects, mm -hmm. you know, different models being adopted. So I see AI now kind of kicking up similar to I OT, IT. Yeah, most definitely. You know, we have a lot of projects in that space. Like doing predictive analysis on, let's just say something simple like a pump. Right, if you have pumps out there that are that are that are running for years and years, but you notice that there's a trend that on day 305 or whatever, <laughs> you know, a bearing starts to fail all the time, you know, that kind of analytics can start doing predictive maintenance content and start yeah. pushing out work orders in advance before the things fail because downtime costs yes. millions of dollars for these manufacturers. Downtime also incidents, right? So you never know, right? Exactly, What's going on. exactly right, right. So yeah. it's good to have that safety net, at, um, at least from a manufacturing perspective. Final question for me, what's the most exciting thing going on in your world right now? If you had to kind of pick one thing wow. that you're most jazzed up about. I have to say, you know, Rockwell's doing a big shift to uh, cloud-based content and more big data numbers like we were just talking about for that AI. Um, that complexity of what you can do with AI and the value that you can do to like just, you know, if I can make quality of a product a, a half a percent better, um, that's millions of dollars for my customer and I see us doing a lot of work in that space and moving that forward. That's big for me, yeah. I think. And what are some of that, my last question is, what are some of the impacts that customers can expect from that? 
Yeah, so everything from downtime to product quality to increasing production rates and volumes of data that come out. You know, we do something called model predictive control that does you know, very tight uh, control on control loops to improve like just the general product quality with a lot of the big data numbers that are coming in on that. Uh, so you'll see us moving more in that space too to improve you know, product quality and, and then downtime. And, and really driving outcomes, business outcomes for your customers. Most David, definitely. thank you so much for joining sure. us on the program, sharing what Rockwell Automation is doing. We appreciate your insights, your time, and we want to keep watching to see mm. what comes next. Sure. Glad to be here, it's right. great, Thanks. thank you Our very much. Our pleasure. For our guests, I'm John Furrier. I'm Lisa Martin. You've watched theCUBE live in Chicago from Ansible Fest 2022. Thanks for watching.